Hi, welcome to another episode of Just C++. Uh, today it's about Dlib, which has released on the Sunday um, the newest version 19.5. Um, later a little bit more about that. Um, currently in the background I have the overview on the machine learning part of that library, which is one of the most interesting parts of Dlib, I think. And this um, graph shows you what part in Dlib you should use if you have a certain problem that you want to solve with machine learning. And I think this is a very, very good part to get started in Dlib and to show that you know, Dlib is useful for classification problems, data transformations, structured predictions, um, clustering, etc. And the clustering is one of the things I, I used and will show you a little bit in code. And there's examples for that also, so you can play around with that in Dlib itself um, and then easily adapt that for your own program, which I did. Um, so let's get started with a short overview on Dlib. And um, with that, let's have a look at the website. This is the machine learning part where you also find the image where we just uh, were at. But this is the main website of Dlib. Um, and as you see, there's many uh, things you can do with it. Uh, the library itself is licensed as Boost. Uh, it has a Boost license. Um, and as you see, there's deep learning, there's um, numeric algorithms, graph things, image processing, you can load and save images. Um, but you also could like use OpenCV with this library, which is often done. and. Uh, the library also has Python bindings, so it's also quite heavily used in, with Python in scientific computing or with C++. Um, and yeah, it offers support for, for Bayesian nets, for machine learning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it also has a blog where you can find the newest blog entry about the current release. And the current release brings a new example for detecting images, which builds up on uh, hoc based detectors, which have previously been in Dlib already. And as you see here, um, that's a good example where they actually, it's actually a recorded video where they analyze the video and point out the, the driving cars on the road as rectangles. And how this all work and works and how this magic is actually working um, is covered in this blog post. It's a very technical blog post, not very much about C++. But if you really want to know how machine learning actually works and detects things, that's probably a very good thing to get started. Um, the blog post for the previous version uh, was what triggered my interest in the library and at C++ now I did implement a little bit of code uh, using this example. Um, because with this version, uh, Dlib is able to cluster faces. And this is for me very interesting as for the conference I run, uh, I get a lot of pictures from like lots, 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 lots of pictures. And I would like to be able to have some program to classify them, like to find like every picture where a certain person in this or almost every picture or like large set of those pictures. And that's possible with that to just to, to find the faces, cluster them in groups, and um, I have an example program for that, uh, which I can show, which I will show you later. Um, but first, let's get through this overview. This is the current release, and you see there's a lot of changes and a lot of new things. And also, when you go further down, uh, there's some non compatible changes, and there's also some bug fixes. So if you're using the library, you probably want to update. This is like a really big re uh, release. If we see um, the 19.4 release was not as big and the bigger release um, was the 19.3 release. And currently I'm using um, 19.4, which mainly was released because there was a memory leak, which was fixed in this release. Um, and yeah, so image processing, um, pixel types, loading images, scanning images, and all kinds of algorithms is what the Dlib supports. And as I started with this image, um, this gives you a very good overview of what the library is capable to do in the area of machine learning. But there are also a lot of other fields where the library could be used. Um, so you probably want to read through the documentation. And with that, let's quickly have a look at the example. 
program, which I'm currently running, as you see here. Um, I just have a test image set from a conference from Meeting Cplus 2016, where I'm just scanning um, through these images. And then later I group them and I, for example, yeah, it finds me, it finds also Bjarne, like all pictures from Bjarne. Um, it's not always perfect. Um, and also in those images, some false faces have shown up, though the algorithm mostly looks you know, for, for eyes, mouth, etc. And um, but it works pretty well, and the clustering also works pretty well and needs some 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 tweaking. But um, I'm very, very, very happy with that. And um, let's continue this with showing a little bit of code that you can see um, what actually powers this. Um, this is an example copied from, uh, this is actually from a DLib example um, where the actual face clustering is happening. Um, so you see, there's lots and lots and lots of code which uh, creates the needed uh, network, the, ne the needed network to actually be um, clustering faces. So this is complete DLib code and, and this is written by King Davis. And um, I run this inside uh, a cute thread pool and I have a class face set which gives you all faces and um, then this code runs. It deserializes uh, this data set into the neural net and then we run the net on all faces and this gives us then a correlation um, which we have to use a certain uh, yeah, lambda here for, which is basically how we correlate this. And then the, the correlation itself is, is a DDoP algorithm again. And we get as a result the edges, which are then put into the Chinese cluster, uh, Chinese whispers. And this actually puts out the clusters and then you have the edges and the labels. And once I have that, I have actually a, a one part of a graph and I emit that to, to be processed somewhere else in the program. Um, also, uh, previously I've shown you that I'm using the uh, face detector and shape predictor objects a bit different and DLib they are quite heavy, heavy and difficult to load and so performance wise it makes sense to load them once and share them for each running thread one object and hence I need a face detection pool and this pool shares two different objects um, through an object called, uh, called pool service uh, which I'm also going to go in quickly. Um, and this pool service needs an any object to, to create a new object. Um, and the pool service itself takes care of the uh, of being a pool and hence just includes all the needed code. Um, I've blocked about that and I have recorded two, two videos. So the last two episodes were about this. And so if you, if you're interested in these details, you have to go there and look this up and um in the face group I mean, yeah here's also another interesting thing um actually make this um this is how you convert the image which comes from the dlib into a q uh, into a cute image which, which isn't uh that easy because the uh, actually it's rgb24 so it's a correct format but if if, if you load it with cute in that format uh, the images will be uh, not as good as they are actually should be. They're, they're kind of broken. And this is the right way to, to load it. Um, and this is the whole setup which I currently use to run this program, uh, which you previously saw. Um, mostly using the DLib uh, 
this is the part which actually uh, looks into each image and finds the um, and extracts the in the uh, faces. And um, with that code, also that's like from a dlib example. Um, with that code, I'm just going through every image and extract the faces, and then later I have uh, one data set of all faces which I found, and then I correlate them uh, as a whole data set. And this takes a lot of time to, to a lot of time to to be calculated on on, on this uh, box which I have here on the laptop, but it's it's fun for testing and definitely. Um, Playing around with it and plan plan to to open source open source this program once it actually works once I actually have used it for the day, uh, for the conference um, so that people can have an, an example where, where where they see how Dlib can be used in their programs if you know detect certain certain features and images faces is just an example here um, and this brings me to the end and I am currently in Berlin at the Andels. Uh, so meaning C++ 2017 takes shape uh, just a few weeks. I'm currently working also on releasing the new website. Might make a video about that. Um, and the website, I hope next week is able to be released. And then I hope a week later we have the uh, examples of the of this year's conference online with the schedule and the uh, talks listed on the on the website, which currently is only a little bit because I don't want to do it in the old system. I want to do it only in the new website to to push me to really get the web, to get the website online. And in a few weeks, I'm also going to be at CppCon. Looking forward to meet uh, you either at Meeting C++ or at um, CppCon, which are both great conferences. And if you want to go to either, I think tickets are still available except you cannot buy tickets per invoice for CppCon anymore. That deadline passed last Friday. You still can do that for um, meeting C++. The deadline for the current ticket price is October 1st. So if you're interested to visit my conference, uh, meeting C++, which I organize, then you should see that you get your tickets in September. And with that, we're actually done. And thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.